Today we're going to be talking about types in hacks. Hacks is a static typing language like a lot of object oriented languages out there so you can set types um, but as you can see in my previous videos I haven't really gone through and talked about types or used types in any of my classes apart from this one which you saw um, I'll come to that later but just to make it easier to understand so now I'm going to talk about all um, the common types in hacks, the types that I use a lot. And um, yeah, so let's start. The first one that I'm going to tell you about is something called a Boolean, which means a value can only be set to true or false. So by default, I'm going to set that to false. Um, before I continue, hacks um, has something called type inference. So it will automatically set the type of a variable or, or method. Um, it will just figure it out based on the value. So as you can see, if I hover over this variable, it's already set the type to bool. So <clears throat> the benefit of doing it here is more for readability. And so that um, as, as a programmer, you know that this is set to a certain value. And if you change it, the compiler will have a go at you and say, hey, this is meant to be a string and this is meant to be a bool and you set it to a string. So yeah, that's a bit about type inference in your hacks. The next type to talk about is an int, which is any whole number. So this, this example says so that. Um, and naturally, we're going to talk about floats, which is a floating point number. So a number with a decimal point. Funnily enough, you can have a number without a decimal point in the float and it will still pass it. I think floats take up more um, memory space when, when they're compiling to certain languages. Um, and ints don't. So if you're, if you're going to have an int, then make sure you have an int and yeah, don't mix them up. Okay, so now let's talk about a string, which I kind of already have spoken about at the beginning, but it's basically uh, any variable or method that's going to return some characters. Um, next is an array. So array is a bit different to set inside hacks. So I'll show you what type inference does here. So you can see it's got an array, capital A, R, R, Y, um, with square, with arrows, um, greater than, less than arrows and an int in the middle. So what that means is say this is like the type, I don't know, function method, and this is the argument that's coming into the type. So int is the argument, and this is the, the kind of function. Um, as you can see, you can only set one type inside an array, and if you want to do more, you can use um, something called dynamic. You can see I can put anything I want inside this array and hacks will be okay with it. Um, that using dynamic is kind of discouraged, it's kind of the worst case scenario. Um, if you wanted to do something like this, I think um, you can, I'm not sure how you do this actually, I think you can have a more elaborate type, but I'll come to that later. So let's talk about something called um, any, uh, which I guess is similar to dynamic, but um, it's a bit more strict. So I'll show you that in a bit. So here is our object, which is any. If we were to have a constructor, make it public, um, and change that down the line, so we want to say, We'll add another one three here. This will break because I've already set the type up here to have one and two, and I can't now change it down here to have three. And that's why that's why you can do dynamic here. Dynamic is more is more open. You can change things later on in the code. So you change types later on in the code. So um, I'm not sure. Let's do a quick test. I'm not sure what happens if I'm going to put any here with that. Yeah. So I guess it's a bit more strict. So if you wanted to do something, use any um, over dynamic. Dynamic should be the worst case scenario. Okay, so next is an enum. So an enum, if you don't know, is like a special class that only contains constant, constant variables. So this is an example. This is a very simple enum. And what I can do is set this as the type of enum that I've put up here. Um, and so it can only equal 
the things inside here. So the number one, and this cannot be something like three because it's meant to be this. So it can be three like that. You can write any number without the um, oh, numbers with an S. Yeah, you can write an enum without the parent name in front of it, so that will still pass. Uh, the next thing to talk about is null. So again, null is a bit similar to arrays in that it has a, an argument that comes in with it. So, so I want to do uh, um, a function, not a function, a variable that is nothing at the beginning, but then down the line, I can't do that. Uh, so let's make it small. Way. Down the line, I want to change it to an int, then that will work. If I made it a string, it will break because I've said it's going to be an int here. Okay, so now we're going to talk about a void. So, void is basically a method that doesn't return anything. So, I can have it do something like this, and this is automatically a void because it doesn't return any value. If I then make it return a value, it's no longer a void, it's now int. And as you can see, the same um, types you use here can be used as return values for methods as well. You don't use a void for um, a variable because what's the point? A variable should always be returning something. Um, it has to hold a value. I can't then do this because then it will break for various reasons. So don't use a void for a variable. That doesn't make sense, so there's no point. Okay, next thing to talk about is a map. So a map is kind of like a special special array that can hold different types. So I guess you use a map for this case. Um, let's try and give you an example. Okay. So as you can see, you can have the array syntax with say a string that maps to uh, an int. So it's kind of like having key value pairs. So not the same as this, to be honest. It's a bit more like this in object. So one here being one here. Um, I could use a lowercase o to demonstrate that. But the difference being that with a map, I can do something like this. And it will give me the value of one. And I can do that with this as well if I wanted to. I could do um, one as well, and it will give me the value one. But the difference here is that I could have this string value be, um, be an argument in a method, and then I could pass that into here. So it can be dynamic based on what the method wants it to return. And I can't do that with a, a, a set object. So that's the advantage of having a map. Um, I don't know if you can have, say, one array and have multiple types inside it with a map. Because maps only have, let's have a look. Can you do that? No, you can't. I don't think you can do that. Yeah, you can only have two. You can't have three in there. So I'm still not sure how you do this in hacks. Maybe if you know, put it in the comment below. But yeah. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is a class type. So as you can remember, if you watched my previous videos, I set um, I set buttons. Um, I set some buttons here, but I didn't assign any types to them because type inference and hacks all, all automatically does it. So this is already a secondary number type, but I can do it manually here. So primary button, no, primary button. That didn't work. I thought it automatically imported, but it didn't. So I have to import it manually, like so, and then I can assign this variable to primary button, like that. And so now this primary button variable has all the attributes of my class up here, as well as this new test variable I made public here. So as you can see, this, this public variable I made here to be set to false. The boolean can be accessible by this element can be an error. Um, yeah. And the next thing to talk about is either. 
So either a bit similar to dynamic is something that you use in the worst case scenario. Um, it makes sense for something like JavaScript and Python that aren't type specific, but with another language, it might be quite problematic. So if we wanted to have, um, let's say as array with, with two types. So without using that, I can do right either. Um, and this array will either have um, a string or an int. So I can do that, I can do that, and it will be okay with it. Um, now the beauty of having hacks running VS Code is that you can look into the source code of any, any uh, method that comes with the program. And as you can see, it's similar to dynamic, um, but allows you to put into arguments. And as you can read inside this documentation, it says uh, use of this type is discouraged unless you're using JavaScript or Python. So use it sparingly depending on the language you're compiling to. And the final type to talk about, possibly my favorite, is when you can make up your own types uh, with type def. Okay. So I like to set my types with a capital T. So I'm gonna write a type for, say, this object. So I'm gonna make it one type int into type int as well. So instead of having any here, I can have that here. And for this example here, I could have an optional, um, what's the word, like an optional type. So two, sorry, three, be int. So this will be fine, but also this will be fine as well. But not that, without break, because I haven't written the type inside here. You can also nest types if I wanted to. So I could do nest. I could contain um, four, like so, uh, five. And as you can see already, there are, there are two different ways of writing type definitions. One with the variable in front of it, um, and semicolons, and two with commas. Um, I personally prefer this way, but you can do whatever you want. So I've nested that, so that will break, but uh, this will not. And you can also set, similar to the either type, you can also pass your own variables into it. So I could do something like that, and I could do uh, past <coughs> t, there we go, and then this can take in an int if I wanted it to. Or let's be different. let's take in a string, or let's take in the enum that I put up here. So now it's passed in this enum. And so what that means is I can do something like just any dot passed, and this has to equal that. So yeah, that's it. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. And as usual, subscribe and like to this channel. Thanks for watching.